Today we're going to look at a game of 33 playing mid Nature's Prophet in an 8k average pub. And right at the start here, he's summoning Treants and he's sending this out to Scout. And he's also sending them here into mid to see if there's a ward planted down here. He sees he's being shot at, so he knows there's a ward somewhere here. And now he waits in Fountain until 20 seconds before the horn. He summons two Treants and he's gonna go and block his camp. Now of course you could also go forward and uh, fight with the team for the runes, but here he's going to opt for the block. And of course it's very easy to block if you have these two Treants plus your main hero, you usually get a much better block than the enemy hero. Now Nature's Prophet as a mid hero is quite unusual, and one of the main reasons for that is just that there aren't any trees in the mid lane. If you look at the safe lane or the off lane, you have trees everywhere, but in the mid lane you have to either have to go back or you have to go forward to actually summon your trees. So that's of course an impediment for Nature's Prophet. And also the mid lane is so short you can't even chase people with your treants. But on the other hand, nowadays Nature's Prophet actually is quite uh, XP hungry. You really want to get uh, as many levels as possible so that your treants actually become much stronger with higher levels. So previously, the damage just stayed the same, and then uh, level 1 Nature Scroll is actually very strong. Nowadays, you need a couple of levels for Nature Scroll to be really uh, hitting its its peak potential. So Nature Prophet is still, a, of course, a very strong hero level 1, but no longer nearly as strong as it used to be. So getting levels is much more important now than it used to be. In terms of items, he went for a Blightstone, which is just a very strong item for Nature Prophet because it also buffs the damage of Etrians and just generates a strong right click item. And then he went for a circlet and a, a branch here. And then he sipped himself out a magic stick, always of course a strong item against a hero that uh, uses a lot of spells, which is of course the case for Storm. His spells are quite uh, low mana cost, so he's going to use them a lot. And um, then of course he's flying himself out, a, or walking himself out a sentry uh, ward here, which is going to use to deward that ward that he spotted earlier. And so he finds the ward here and kills it, that's some um, uh, nice gold, 110 gold, uh, definitely very much worthwhile as well as a couple bunch of XP. And the reason you don't want, want to go for something like a couple of Null Talismans on Nature's Prophet is that uh, these items don't really scale all that well. Null Talismans, they're good on heroes like Alina for example, who actually wants to do a lot of spell damage, but Nature's Prophet, the spell damage modes that Null Talismans give you is pretty irrelevant. I mean, it buffs you know, Wrath of Nature, but uh, on the whole, you just do mostly physical damage. So, Nultalism is not that great, and so you'd rather get items like a Blightstone and just like, get early on into your uh, treads. He's also going for a Buckler, which is going to help him uh, with uh, early game fighting, and it's also going to buff his Treants. So, it's a, a decent uh, value item to get in the early game, and an item that just scales a lot better into the early mid game than uh, would a bunch of Null Talismans. Plus of course you already do so much right click damage with your Treants, you already need the Null Talismans for last hitting. Uh, so um, it's best to just skip those. Now this runes only start uh, spawning at 4 minutes, so this 4 minute rune is even more important. Uh, this storm has a bottle so you definitely want to deny this rune to him if you can at all. And so he picks up this arcane rune. And now because the storm didn't get this bottle refill, he's just going to be able to get a kill here. And um, doing this blocking here, the way you do this blocking in terms of micro is just uh, you right click with your hero and then you just uh, focus on controlling your treants. Uh, don't bother doing some sort of stutter stu stu step micro with your main hero. It's just important to keep up this block so you just uh, focus on controlling those treants and then we can get these uh, kinds of kills. So after TPing back to base to heal, he's going to TP out to this lane and very importantly he does this with the arcane rune still active. So um, this means he can TP back to his uh, mid lane in 35 seconds and he goes in here, they get a kill, uh, nicely done and now he can just uh, keep some pressure on this lane, keep this terror blade from farming and then he can TP back to his uh, own lane in uh, just 10 seconds. He's level 7 now, so now he can do this. He uh, sprouts the hero, clicks Nature's Call directly on top of him, and this surrounds the Trakira with Treants. He can't get out of this, and that is an easy kill. Uh, it's kind of tricky to land the exact right positioning, because if you don't uh, click in the 
uh, right location, you're not actually going to surround the enemy. So definitely something to practice a couple of times in demo mode until you get it right. And uh, now of course he's going to put pressure onto this tower. A storm comes in here, but uh, Storm is not really strong enough to kill off Nature's Prophet here. Just not enough damage, so you can just easily TP out. So after healing up, he goes back here and tries to go for a kill on Storm Spirit. Same uh, mechanic again, surrounding the Storm Spirit, but Storm Spirit can actually get, get out of this with Electric Vortex, so he survives. But he's very low now and can't even contest uh, Nature's Prophet uh, trying to take this tower now. This tower is really low, but uh, Nature's Prophet also really low, so you want to just try to configure this so that you actually get the last hit, or at least the catapult gets the last hit. You don't want the security to be able to deny this, but unfortunately he messes up here and doesn't get the last hit. Let's talk a little bit about itemization. In my previous video on Persistent 3 Nature's Profit, I talked about the importance of going for utility items, of not going for this right click build, but instead um, building items like, uh, like Pipe, like Vlad, like Solar Crest. And this allows you to actually win team fights um, rather than just being this uh, split pushing hero that uh, farms a lot but then in the end uh, doesn't really contribute much to, to his team. But here we're in a bit of a different situation. Uh, first of all, he's playing position 2 rather than 3, and he also has his Unlord in his team. And of course, Unlord, he really excels at buying these kinds of aura items, kind of team fight items. So it's not really your job as Nature's Prophet here to, do for, to go for that. Um, and here they go on this center war runner and they're trying to kill him, but they're all really, really low. <laughs> they're just trying to kill him here. Three versus one, but uh, center is just too tanky with his two rings of uh, protection. And uh, now they're actually just all going to die. And Ursa also goes in here uh, for some reason and also dies. <laughs> and so that was uh, kind of awkward here. Um, but yeah, as I was saying about the item builds, in this lineup you have uh, Underlord who already wants to buy these aura items. You don't really have a traditional right-clicking hero here. You have Ursa as kind of a, a right-clicker, but uh, he's not a hero who scales all that well. He's not a hero that really hits buildings well. So you kind of need that, that right-click damage. Otherwise, you're just going to lack damage here uh, in this game. So it makes sense here to build it is Prophet as a right clicker here. And I really like this item build. He went of course for power treads, which is the most efficient boots you can get on uh, It is Prophet, as on most ranged heroes. Just with the changes to phase boots, they're just no longer very strong on ranged heroes. And treads are just so strong right now, they're so cheap, give you so much DPS, and of course thread switching is great. Um, so yeah, definitely go for, for treads, almost always with Nature's Prophet. There's some cool things you can do with phase, but uh, generally the uh, raw power of treads is just much higher. And then he went for a blade mail. And blade mail is actually a great item. It's, it re received sort of a stealth buff in 725 because the uh, broadsword is um, um, much cheaper now. It's 200 gold cheaper. So um, blade mail is actually an item that doesn't require a recipe and it gives you a lot more stats than the individual components have. So this uh, broadsword has 16 damage, blade mail has 28. Chainmail has um, 4 armor, blade mail has 6. Rove of the Mantra has 6 int, int and uh, blade mail has 10. So you get a lot of stats out of this uh, 2000 gold item. Um, as an int hero, you actually get 38 damage from this, which is huge for a, an item that's uh, not primarily a damage item. Like we can compare this to a Crystalis. Crystalis actually gives less damage um, for slightly more gold. Of course, it has the crit, which um, Blademail doesn't, but then Blademail also has a really strong uh, um, uh, active, as well as, of course, giving, giving you some extra tankiness and some extra mana to play with. So Blademail is just a really, really efficient uh, early game fighting item that also scales quite well into the late game because, of course, that uh, damage return is, uh, is quite strong. Uh, uh, against these kind types of AoE damage heroes that they have on the Radiant lineup. And after Blademail is going to go for an Orchid, which is a very traditional right-click item on Nature's Prophet. Of course, it provides you a lot of uh, efficient damage as well as the Silence. So it's a 25 int, uh, 30 damage, so it's uh, 
55 damage on an interior as well as 30 attack speed and of course all the mana region you could want. Mana region not that big of a deal on Nature's Prophet but it's, uh, it's a nice bonus. And of course the silence is great especially against Storm Spirit. If Storm Spirit jumps you, you can just always fight back with an Orchid and maybe even get a kill. So the general game plan here is you just want to farm and then you want your team to make plays around the map and then you can just join in these fights with your teleport uh, playing it kind of like you would play a Spectre we, we always have this ability to uh, join fights anywhere on the map and uh, this of course allows you to farm very very rapidly and uh, unlike Spectre you actually have a, a natural farming accelerating spell with Nature's Call and these treants especially in the early game uh, give you so much extra DPS and the uh, um, speed of a farm a lot but unfortunately in this game the Dire team is not really gelling very well. There's a bit of conflict here, especially between Ursa and this uh, Snapfire, and uh, everyone on the team is kind of unhappy with Ursa. So um, he tries to rush here. Um, Snapfire gets killed. Ursa gets killed here. Um, and what does Nature's Prophet do here? He just TPs out. And there's no, no reason to join this fight, because you're not winning this fight even if you TP in there. It's very important to quickly look at fights if you're playing Nature's Prophet, see can we win this fight if I join, and if the answer is no, you want to split push somewhere else. You don't want to TP into uh, losing fights that you just have no ability to turn around. It's a very important skill to master as Nature's Prophet, uh, quickly uh, uh, judging whether a fight is winnable or not, and then depending on that, TPing in or just uh, going for the split push. And the split pushing while there's a team fight going on is very, very safe. The enemies are not going to be able to gank you uh, when they're all in the, in the team fight. You obviously know where the enemy are, and so you can easily just, just uh, push another wave in. And then, even uh, if the enemy win the fight and uh, go for an objective, well, you can take an objective of your own, and then you just, uh, you just trade it, and uh, uh, it's not as big of a deal that you lost that team fight. The way you want to split push if you don't know where the enemy are is very, very carefully. See, TP is here in the trees, the enemy are not going to have vision of this. He spawns tree and here, and then he just walks away. And this is during night time, he wasn't seen during this. So, this is a very, very safe way of pushing. And he farms this nearby camp, so that he's still getting uh, most of his experience, and um, not really putting his own hero into as, as much danger, because he's just playing around here in, in fog, and... Uh, of course, it's always possible to get ganked here, but the chances of being ganked here are fairly low, so this is a risk definitely worth taking. Ursa wants to Roshan again, but he gets found here and just killed, uh, and it's an un overall miserable situation here. Uh, Ursa is kind of uh, throwing here. So what do you do here as Nature's Prophet? Well, you're already pushing into this um, bottom lane here, and... Um, so what you would like to do is uh, push the top lane, but you've just seen the enemy being near here, you just stand here, so uh, this is not safe to farm. As you see, there was a storm here, uh, probably other people behind here, um, actually not, but he doesn't know that. So it was very much safer here not to go for this top lane and instead just farm the jungle. Ursa still wants to Roche, so this Prophet joins in here, and a team fight is going to break out here. What you want to do in this team fight is you want to stay on the outskirts, you want to hit the weaker heroes, you hit this uh, Shadow Demon and gets a kill here. Storm Spirit jumps onto him, but he's holding this Orchid, so Storm Spirit can't really um, fight uh, mano a mano, so um, he has to sort of jump around here, and they use the Sonar, the the, this Terror Blade, and uh, now they want to perhaps go back to the Roshan, but uh, Ursa is sort of w waiting around here. Uh, hesitating or from there to go in again and he has Nature's Prophet kind of have to sort of follow your, your team's lead you don't want to go in first um, Unlord or this uh, Ursa have to go in first and then you can uh, go in and um, help out so this fight just kind of fizzles out uh, the enemy are kind of retreating uh, sending in a scouting illusion here into Roshan and so now it's actually time for some more split pushing you know they were all just here there's no way they can catch you here if you split push down here. So this is very safe, but even so, he's not going to stay for very long. He's just going to stay here for like 10 seconds, uh, get some last hits in there, 
and then just uh, continue the push with this tree ends. And it's just gonna wait around here for a little bit. He has to teleport up again. And uh, now he can actually join his team in this uh, team fight. He thinks this is a team fight that can win. And he gets healed up here with his essence ring, healed up by the Phoenix. And he can just stand his ground, use this blade mode to great effect. And they crushingly win this team fight. And even though they were quite a bit behind before, this is, uh, goes a long way towards bringing them back into this game. And now as I can finally take his Roshan. What you do is uh, Nature's Prophet here, after healing up, you don't go into Roshan. They don't need your help. There's three people there, there's no way they can test this. So this Ursa can Rosh on his own, and what you can do in, this, in the meantime is just take this tier 1 tower. This is the most high value player you can make right here, and it's also very safe because your teammates are nearby and there's so many people dead. So it's an easy tier 1 tower. So you're just pushing this tower, what do you do next? Do you just continue pushing here? No, that would be disaster, that would be doom, they would also almost certainly be ganked. Because he knows that this wave is pushing in, someone has to deal with this wave. So um, pushing this bottom lane is very safe, or at least fairly safe. It's not very likely that he's going to get ganked here, because the enemy have to deal with this. So now he's down here, and again, you don't continue here running here. You actually have to get out of here fairly soon. He's taking a bit of a risk here, um, taking this wave too. Um, we see some heroes um, in the middle, so he thinks this is fine. Um, Phoenix is gonna, gonna get killed, and um, now you have this Underlord with you, and now you can be a bit more bold because Underlord can TP you out if uh, necessary. Um, but actually, he's gonna try to go for this kill on Soul Spirit. He has the Orchid, Soul Spirit doesn't have a use or anything like that. Uh, Soul Spirit almost gets killed here, but uh, not quite, so that's a bit unfortunate. But Soul Spirit gets away, and of course, this was not any sort of big investment. Another fight is breaking out here in the mid lane. Ursa being gone on here. He has the Aegis, so and they want to fight. The TP is in, he immediately uses his Blade Mail for the AoE stuff that's gonna come here. But uh, just not really a good fight to take. As Nedus Buffy, you just have to hit what he can here, and just didn't get anything done. Hitting this terribly is not uh, particularly promising because he has 30 armor. So you always want to hit these weaker heroes, the Jakiro, um, you want to hit the Shadow Demon, you want to hit the Storm Spirit. These are the kind of soft targets you want to go for. And since the enemy are pushing and you can't really defend right now, what you do, you split push, of course. Uh, a push in this uh, wave at top, you also push in bottom, but it's a bit, a bit more risky because there's a tower right here, so you might get killed. Whereas here, there's no way the enemy can, can be there in time to stop a split pushing. So you can push in on the, another wave here. And he still sees all the enemy, so now he can either continue up here or even TP down here. But this would be a bit more risky. Um, but the enemy actually want to go high ground here, so um, he has to kind of come back here and defend. And uh, so now go going in here, and his prophet is actually kind of waffling here, uh, taking a bit too long, honestly. Um, uh, but he's now here, he has bought his uh, Hyperstone, and now they're defending these Raxes. But unfortunately, they don't really get any sort of exit skills. They in fact, lose Ursa and don't get any compensation. And you can see here a lot of conflict in this team. Um, 33 complaining about Ursa, and you know, Ursa is going to complain about Snapfire. So, this is not the best environment here, but of course, this is something that's going to happen in a lot of pub games. And uh, you can play well even if your if your team is uh, is not uh, really cooperating fully. Um, he's still gonna try his best to win this game and uh, just try to carry his team because everyone else in his team is gonna is, has a, a terrible time. This Ursa is really really poor. In fact, below the enemy support Shakiro, um, this Underlord is also quite poor. So. Um, Nature's Prophet is the only one who's really having a good, uh, good game on the um, Dire lineup, so he's going to have to somehow carry this uh, just with his uh, right clicking. So he can't go back into any sort of utility build. You just have to be uh, the biggest carry here. And uh, the thing is, I guess Terror Blades, you need to be up like, like at least one item, it's really realistically more like two items to be able to stand toe to toe with this Terror Blades. So the enemy are pushing the top tower, and they just have the much stronger team fight right now. They have this uh, 10 second PKB on Terror Blade, you can't really fight this. Uh, so they just split push down here, take the bottom tower, trade it for this top tower. 
So that's a, a very good trade if you're behind in the game like this. And now he's just going to continue a little bit here. Uh, they want to force someone back, and then when someone TPs back, you can take a fight. Uh, like a, um, and hopefully you can win a um, five versus four fight. Even that is not really assured here. It's just going to put some pressure onto this, and this is quite risky. But you have to take some risks here uh, if you're behind like this. But he has this PKB, so he can always get out of this. And um, he's actually going to turn on this swordsman a little bit, but sees it's not really working, so he TPs out and um, saves himself. And, and this way he can prevent this uh, high ground push from the enemy. They have two supports still here in this jungle. Um, so Prophet is going to TP in here, going to try to find someone, sees this Jakiro, uh, gets banished, but his team is about to arrive and it's going to be a really good fight for them. Uh, they try to kill this Nishpa, but there's no chance of that. He has, he's really tanking with his Essence Ring and, of course, getting heals uh, from this Underlord and from this Phoenix. So, um, easy kill there. Unfortunately, not getting the second kill, but uh, one kill is uh, already quite good, especially behind like this. Meanwhile, the enemy are pushing the bottom lane. And they want to respond here. Actually, Underlord tries to be in there, but he doesn't take anyone along with him. And uh, if you look here, we have no TP here. Um, it's still on cooldown, and Snapfire also has to walk here, so this fight is not going to go really well. Underlord is already almost dead, and the rest of his team arrives, and uh, it's just not really a fight that's going to work out. This egg is not going to pop, uh, so uh, Snapfire just, just have to get out of here. You have to actually go and uh, uh, push another lane. The problem is, this lane is not really pushable right now, but you, you could TP something like here and cut the wave. And uh, that would probably be a good move, but um, I guess he's kind of scared here. Scared. Still 15 seconds before his teammates spawn, so he has to somehow defend this, somehow by time. Uh, Terrible is kidding, this melee rex is going to get this kill pretty soon. Meanwhile, this prophet is distracting two players here, he uses his um, BKB to escape. And this is not really looking particularly good, they can still use this fortification, but this melee rex is going to go down and they can just run away here with this Manta, and that is one main Rex down. They also took a lot of damage onto this uh, tier 3 tower. So things are not looking good. It's an 11k lead with this lineup that's honestly much stronger than Lake game. This Terror Blade just scales so much better than Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet is doing some more split pushing, uh, but he's now being gone on by the Storm. Storm is almost out of mana, but still. Lunch Prophet is, out, is outnumbered here, tries to fight here, but uh, TP is out a bit late and almost as he went up to 17 HP. That's really, un really unnecessary. He could have just switched to Strength Threads and uh, used his Magic Wand, but he still survived uh, thanks to uh, sheer luck here. But he TPs back in, and now, of course, you want to try to deal with the Storm. Storm now is used so he can dispel the um, Silence, but of course, he's really low in mana because of that long jump. And they managed to actually catch this uh, Shadow Demon, um, keep his forward here, and um, that is another kill. So they have three people dead. And while they are pushing in this, this lane here, let's talk a little bit about talents. He went for the 30 damage talent, very standard, just much stronger than 25 movement speed. At level 15, this sort of can go for either option, but especially if you go for this uh, more carry style play. 10 armor is, is, is much stronger, just gives you so much uh, um, survivability, especially against the Terror Blade, so much physical damage. They catch this uh, Center War Runner and just uh, kill him. And uh, if you're behind this in games like these, it's very important to seize these kinds of timings. You can't just uh, sort of uh, uh, go back to, to farming the lanes, something like that, or farming the jungle after taking such a good team fight. You actually have to get something out of this. And in this case, they got an extra kill here with the Centaur. And uh, now they're looking to do Roshan once again while this uh, Centaur is uh, still dead. Level 20 talent, he went for the cooldown reduction. Very strong, of course. You have four active abilities as well as a couple of active items. And he's also gone for this Enchanted Quiver, which is quite strong with cooldown reduction. Actually, adds a lot of damage. So. Um, in this fight, like anyone have focused the weaker targets, he focused Storm Spirit here, that's very good, very high level target. But now Terrible is here, so you have to kind of attack him because he's in the way. And actually get this kill, thanks to damage from Ursa and from Edge's Prophet. Edge's Prophet actually is really tanky here, um, just turns on his BKB and survives. So 
Now the enemy have taken two bad fights in a row and uh, now it's time to pounce. Now it's time to actually try to end this game. Um, so his teammates are going to push uh, in this uh, middle lane probably. Um, and then he can push in this bot lane. The lanes are not in the best position here. So um, it's in this kind of um, uh, positions where you're where you've won a team fight, a couple of enemy heroes are dead. You want to push a different lane from your team and then rejoin your team. And that's what he's doing here. He's pushed in bottom lane. Now they're going for the center of War Runner, going for this dive, and they're going to get this kill. And now they have four people dead, but Terrible is about to respawn. Um, but it doesn't have meta yet, so it's not too scary. So they can just keep going here, um, hit those Raxes. Uh, the rest of the team are slowly arriving. They have all the waves pushing in here. This is excellent. This is a very nice sustained push. Because if you pu just push in one wave, they can always just cut this wave, and then your push has a uh, very limited uh, shelf life. But when you push in all the waves, there's nothing the enemy can do. So they just have to fight you here, and they just win with a numbers advantage. So um, this is their crucial timing. This is the one uh, time basically they can win this game. That's Nature's Prophet with this huge number of leads on this. Uh, um, Terror Blade, you know, he's up these two items we talked about, uh, so they can now just uh, end this game and uh, abuse this uh, slim timing they still had. They can get this kill on this um, Storm Spirit. No, actually, uh, managed to about in and out again here, but yeah, now he dies, and uh, there's just t too many numbers here for uh, the Steyr team. They're just outnumbering the enemy, and uh, now it's an easy fight. They can take down. Um, all these heroes and now they're just gonna go for the finish here um, the enemy just they, they, they're never here as five they always just have to fight because otherwise their objectives are just gonna be gone and just probably just does a lot of right click damage here with the spill of course as well as the uh, treants adding quite a bit as well even the late game and so they can just go and um, finish this game and he's just gonna uh, TP out here <laughs> and uh, uh, get a hex, not really necessary here, but uh, just for the flare, I guess. And um, this is going to be a uh, close fought game that eventually the Dyer manages to win. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, tell me in the comment section whether you think that uh, Nature's Problem is actually a viable mid. And as always, please subscribe and ring the bell. And always willing, I'll see you next time.